Now that we've mastered two-step equations, let's apply another inverse operation as we explore the relationship between square and square root with quadratic two-step equations. Inverse operations, or opposite operations, act opposite of one another. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Let's examine another relationship square and square root. If I take a value like 3 and square it, 3 squared equals 9. If I take that same value, 9, but take the square root, I get 3. Reflect in your own words, what is the relationship between squaring and square root? Well, squaring and square roots do the exact opposite of one another. When I squared 3, I got 9. When I took the square root of 9, I got 3. I ended and started at the same value. They are inverse operations. They cancel each other out, leaving a variable by itself in an equation. We use simpler words like cancel, but what we're really doing is finding that identity. And since squaring is related to multiplication, it's the same identity, 1. Quadratic equations come in many different forms and can be solved using many different methods. These two-step quadratic equations can be solved the same way you solve any two-step equation. You'll also notice that these two-step quadratic equations also only have a variable being squared. There are no other variables in these equations. To solve this equation, I will start the same way I start any two-step equation. I'm going to ask myself the same two questions. One, what's happening to the variable? Then I need to list both operations in order. Now, this trick mimics the mental process of solving a two-step equation. You can either write it out or think it out. I need to list out the operations that exist in the equation in order according to the order of operations, PEMDAS. If I look through this, I don't see any parentheses. I do see an exponent, x squared. That's the first operation, the first thing that's affecting my variable. Now the next thing, I don't see any multiplication or division, but I do see addition or subtraction of two. That arrow aims upward. It describes the equation in terms of the order of operations. That's question one, what's happening to the variable? Question two, I'm going to ask myself, how do I undo the operation? And again, that's a simple way of saying, what are my inverse operations? How can I find those identities? How can I cancel out those values to get my variable by itself? So I need to write the inverse operations for each of the current operations. What's nice, if I took the time to write it out, I now have my values and operations in order. So I just need to write the inverse operations. It automatically puts them in the inverse or backwards order. So I had x squared, then I subtracted 2. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to add 2 and then take the square root of both sides. The arrow moving up describes the operations as they exist in the equation according to the order of operations. The arrow pointing down describes the inverse operations in the inverse order. Again, you can do this in your head. I see that my equation has x squared minus 2. Squared comes first because exponents come before addition subtraction. So I'm going to go in the inverse order operations. Instead of subtracting 2, I need to add 2 to both sides. Then, instead of squaring, I need to square root both sides. So now that I know where to start, I'm going to apply the first inverse operation to both sides of the equation. You need to apply it to both to keep the equation balanced. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. In case I forgot what I was thinking through, I wrote down my operations down at the bottom. I start at the top of that arrow facing down. Again, it's giving me road directions. Now I've applied that. I need to evaluate it to each side. 7 plus 2 gives me 9. Negative 2 plus 2 gives me my identity of 0 for addition and subtraction. And I'm left with x squared equals 9. I'm going to apply the second inverse operation. So I went plus 2. Now I'm going to square root both sides. 
If I square root x squared, I just get x. Square and square root are inverse operations. Simply put, they cancel each other out. So I'm left with x by itself. And that's exactly what I need when I evaluate each side of the equation. x equals 3. Often overlooked with square roots is that there's more than one solution. 3 squared can equal 9. But also, negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3 would give me a positive, equaling positive 9. There are always two solutions to each quadratic equation. Try it out yourself and we'll discuss why there are two solutions. For example, if you had 3 squared and negative 3 squared, prove that you get true statements. Also, as a reminder, if you have to take the square root of a negative value, there's no solution. Try plugging square root of negative 25 and square root of negative 36 into your calculator. Write out your answer. Let's try solving 36 equals x squared plus 5. If I want to list out my operations according to the order of operations, there's no parentheses, I see exponents, x being squared. There's no multiplication division, I'm adding 5. Those are the operations that are affecting the variable. Now I need to write the inverse operations in the inverse order. The inverse of adding 5 is subtracting 5. The inverse of squaring is square root. Again, this could be a mental practice or something you write out. If you write it out, it acts like directions, like on a road trip. It tells you exactly which operation and value in the order that you need to follow in order to solve and get your variable by itself. Now that I have my road map, I know I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides and then square root both sides. So I'm going to apply the first operation or verse inverse operation to both sides and evaluate. 36 minus 5 is 31. 5 minus 5 is 0. So we get x squared by itself. Next operation or inverse operation I need to apply is a square root to both sides. If I square root x squared, I cancel out the squared, so I'm left with just x. That's the goal, to get x by itself. So when I, when I evaluate, I get x equals whatever the square root of 31 is. 5.57, but remember there's always two solutions. There's 5.57 and it's opposite. If your answer is positive, you're going to give me a negative answer. In fact, you can only have a positive answer when you plug into your calculator. So that second bonus answer, you can call it, is always going to be the negative or opposite version. If you like to do the math in your head, I see negative 23x squared equals negative 20.5. So if I was following the order of operations, I have an exponent, so I'm squaring. And then I'm multiplying by negative 23. Be careful, that's not minus 23, that's multiplication. So I need to divide and then square root. If you need to write it out, just draw an arrow going up, an arrow going down. The arrow going up describes those operations. So I'm squaring and then I'm multiplying by negative 23. This method's nice because I have the operation and the value. My inverse operations, how do I undo these operations? I'm going to divide by negative 23 and take the square root of both sides. Now I need to apply my operations, my inverse operations. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 23. When I evaluate, negative 23 divided by negative 23 gives me 1. That's my identity, so I know I'm left with just x squared by itself. Negative 20. 0.5 divided by negative 23, watch those negatives, gives me 0.89. Now I just need to take the square root of both sides. The square root and the x squared cancel out. The exponent cancels out with the square root. I'm left with just x by itself, and then in my calculator, a quick calculator moment, I find out what square root of 0.89 is. It's 0.94. If I take 0.94, that's half my solution, the other half is the opposite of 0.94, positive 0.94 and negative 0.94. On your own, try the last two problems. If you struggle at all, go back and retry or rewatch this video.